Hey everyone, it's Kevin with visualproductivity.net. What we're going to be going over today is the file menu in XMind 7. Now this may seem kind of weird that I'm going over this, but I think it is helpful and I'm hoping in the next couple of minutes I'm gonna show you maybe one or two things that maybe you haven't been using that maybe you might want to start using. Let's talk about it. Now, I do have tutorial videos on YouTube for this. This is probably the one you're watching. I also have a blog post that goes in more in depth on these and each of the different sections where I feel the need to, I will include a separate video that will go longer and more in depth. You can see the file menu image I have on the left hand side as opposed to me going ahead and clicking on it. I just took a snapshot of it. Now let's talk about each of the different areas. So the new one, straightforward, right? If you hit Control N, it will take you to the template section, which remember that we're gonna come back to that in a couple seconds and I'll show you exactly where it is. Other than that, Control Shift N is what I would recommend using most often. That's just a blank map. Opening and closing, not too much here. What I would recommend though is if you're not sure how to get a home map, if you're not sure what one is, a home map is whenever you open XMind, that map automatically opens up every single time. If you don't have one set up, it's as simple as going into the preferences section and setting one up on, on your own. Uh, so I'll just leave that alone for now. Um, not too much there I wanna talk about. The saving I wanted to spend a couple of seconds on. What this one here, the save template as, means is if I have something that I've set up, maybe it's something like this, or for my business or for my brainstorming, I have something that I want every single time, maybe some categories, and it's not what they already have, I can take this and save it as a template, and it's right down here. What this will do is now when I go in, remember we talked about Control N, let's Control N. These are the blank templates. If I go over to the top right hand side, I can go ahead and click on this, and there we go, this fills in so this is, these are partially filled in areas. And when I save as, you can see I've just saved two of the cheat sheets here just for fun. I don't really use this section myself, but it's actually a neat section. I should probably be using it more myself. But there you go. That's where it, they'll show up if you save as there. A save to Evernote, I think it's a cool feature. It gives you three options when you go ahead and, and to try and save it to Evernote. I've already saved this file menu as Evernote, so let's go in and we'll have a look and see what it looks like. So there are three options. You can select or deselect any of the options. The first one is to save, well, it's actually the files here, so I'll talk about the file. The file is an actual, the actual XMind file. It's sitting right there for us. The next thing is the image. It gives us a picture view of what we're saving. And it'll give you an image of the, the view, the, what you can see in the viewfinder. Saving as text is great, but the larger your map, the more unwieldy it's gonna become in this. So this, you can see how I've got it all set up here. This is just a small little map that I've got. Okay, let's head back. Dealing with files, let's talk about this quickly. Reducing file size, I like doing this, especially if it's your daily map, the map you use almost every day. Because there's so many revisions being saved, and if you have a lot of information in there, I recommend, I'm not sure, every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, going in and clicking on the reduce file size. Always, always, always back up, of course, there, I've hopefully covered myself, guys. Make sure you back up or save it to Evernote and then you can go ahead and reduce the file size. I'd hate to have you lose something permanently. Encrypting with a password, that is a pro feature, but it's certainly there. Uh, I want to talk about one thing that I actually had several people email me about during the year that I hadn't thought about, but when you're printing off maps, and this is for printing on a printer so you can put it on a wall somewhere, now you're, a, a, now you're able to hide the plus and the minus sign. So you can go ahead and we'll just click on Control P. I'll show you what it does. It used to be really bare. Now they've got tons of stuff in here. So you can choose where, what you want to show. You can show the background. I would probably recommend getting rid of the background unless it's something that associates with what you need. And but you can go ahead and do all these things. It, it's actually, they've done a good job fixing this. I don't remember the last time I've ever printed one, but I know several of you have contacted me about that. So there you go. It's there. Import and export. Got some basic functions. I like the fact that no matter what I do, I can always go into the central node, hit Control C, and copy that and paste it wherever. And it'll copy the whole, it'll paste the whole map wherever I want it to. But if you want to import things, it does have several different features. So FreeMind and MindJet are two of the big ones. FreeMind is kind of a universal format, so it's good to have that. And similar, going back, um, yeah, there's a ton of different features there. I'm not going to talk too much about those. For the a pro feature is that the Gantt chart can now be exported to Microsoft Project, which again, that is big. That way you can do your brainstorming in here, export it to Project and get working on whatever you're working on. I'm gonna close that up and just talk about the share real quick. 
With the local network sharing, you can share it in your household or if you have colleagues at work where you've got a, a local area network, that will allow you to share just within, each, within the network. The xmine.net is just where you can actually upload it to xmine's website if you have a login and a password. And the new feature this year is to upload to BiggerPlate. BiggerPlate is a big repository of xmine and other mind mapping software on the web. You'll need to join the site in order to be able to upload, but, but it's actually it's a really cool site and I suggest you check it out. If you'd like a copy of the map I'm working with, you can head over to visualproductivity.net and get a copy. I call it the Xmind 7 Cheat Sheet and you'll get this. I do ask for your email in exchange and I don't really send out that many emails anyway. Uh, but go ahead and check that out. And guys, thanks so much for watching. I've got tons of videos. Let me know you think in the comments down below. And if this is helpful for you, I'd love to hear your comments. Or, hey, go ahead and hit the like button. That's it for now, guys. Take care.